Okay. Uh, you want to uh, go ahead and drive lower with the proposed agenda? Well, it's not really an agenda. It's just the we have some points uh, where people said that they are interested to discuss. Uh, I looked at it and I don't have enough uh, in, uh, background material to actually really produce an agenda. So I just suggest that we start start to uh, creating the agenda. Sure. Uh, the first three bullets is something we said at last meeting. The fourth bullet is from how you that says he has more to discuss on uh, 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 different design methodologies for 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 headers. Uh, and I think that one we can defer to a later meeting. One or two weeks out. Uh, is how you online? Hmm. I didn't check. Not that I can see. No. Okay. Uh, so I can check with him when they want to do that. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the first bullet, uh, design directives, uh, we can go over that uh, if they. Uh, action bit scope discussion is 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 an definitely an interesting topic but did we uh, uh did we have some material to talk about this or maybe just struggling uh... uh i haven't seen any material okay. uh, that's why i did the agenda as i did uh, i was actually expecting something to come in i've seen that there are some uh, some input on the requirements draft but they have been very late and i'm also late because i haven't sent in mine yet yeah i i did send uh, also from my side uh yeah some yeah, like feedback ten, yeah. 10 minutes ago yeah yeah um, I, yeah uh i i can but i don't know if you have time um we can add a uh, discussion to the but well, it's up to you uh, um, to the authors as well, if they want to um, talk about uh, comments in, in the design meeting. So, yeah, on the requirements draft, the only ones I've seen so far were, were from Bruno. Um... Oh, I did, uh, Matthew, I did send uh, a link, a URL to our GitHub and inline. Let me flash it. Uh, I was okay. working on it. Basically, Sorry. the comments are inlined. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, I, I don't want to, you know, I can definitely go over the comments, but, but one thing that uh, drew my attention most, and I can ask, uh, about it when, uh, when we have time, uh, don't want to steal the order of the agenda right now. So, so Loa, I guess, uh, you know, um, are we agreeing that uh, we should start with the design directive uh, text uh, discussion? Uh, but we don't have the background. Kiriati promised to send, and I haven't seen exactly. it. Yeah, I had an action item from last time. I, I had it open. Uh, let me bring it back. Uh, I, I was checking if Kiriati is on uh, the call, and uh, oh, sorry. What did I? Action items. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so Kiriti last time, uh, yeah, he proposed to have something, but I guess uh, I'm not sure if he added those um, in, in a wiki or not. Uh, I haven't seen it. I'll look. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, we had a couple of action items from last, but, you know, um, um, uh, there was a proposal to discuss in stack and auto stack, uh, data. Um, 
and uh, we wanted to add it to the agenda. And I think you are adding that, right? Yeah, that's 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 listed on the agenda, but there is also no input. Uh, uh, did we solicit input on this? I mean, did we? Because I thought I, I, thought, I, mm. I thought we did by putting it uh, out in the mail. Uh, yeah, the, the yeah. mail was on the re review of the requirements document, right? Or oh, this is a separate mail you mean? Uh, I don't see. I, I sent out a mail with the with the bullets that I copied into the agenda. Oh, okay. Didn't go out. Yeah. But I actually have a proposal because since we don't have the background to start the discussion of anything other than the uh, uh, requirements. I think we should. I have some re requirements. I haven't sent mine in because I'm not finished yet. But uh, if we discuss the draft as it is, and if that's okay with the author, then we can uh, touch down on Bruno's comments, on your comments, and any comments that actually comes up in the meeting. I I, I don't mind that. I would. I would like to see that as well, uh, if, if it's okay. So, what does uh, uh, Stuart and Matt you say? Is that a good idea? Well, I mean, I'm sure we'll talk about requirements if you if you want to make that a focus. Uh, but I think we need some input because um, there really has only been one email, as I remember, on the list about it. Uh, have you seen anything else? Um, Matthew, I, I actually seen two, but uh, okay. the, the the mail from Tarek was very late. Yeah, I do admit I sent it late. Yeah, yeah, I'm just looking for Tarek's email after I haven't seen it. So, um, yeah, we've only seen two sets of comments if you include Tarek's. Um, so, yeah, so mine will be. I will. I'm busy with it, so you will see it. Mine either tomorrow probably. Yeah, my comments are on GitHub, so there, uh, you know, I can give the URL to everyone right now, and you should be able, uh, you know, uh, I, I do encourage everyone to use our GitHub. Uh, it's easy way, uh, but you know. So yeah, if you can send the URL directly, that would be great because I'm on GitHub now and I don't see the comments; I just see the draft. Oh no, I can see it on GitHub. In GitHub. Um, Did you try? I, the I clicked on. I clicked on the link. Uh, I'm not signed in. I clicked on the link uh, that was in the email that went about, and it took me straight to the page, that, which opens up. Uh, it shows a copy of our draft and a bunch of comments in it. Yeah, I, I, I didn't use the link because I, I can't find the email, but I'm I'm just I'm on. Hang on, the, can someone post it in the chat? I, I yeah, did. That really help. Yeah. Um, 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 yeah. Yeah. Because I went via the wiki to get to the GitHub and. Um, and I'm logged in. Yeah, I'm on, I'm also looking at it so. I see that the Tarek captured most uh, some of the comments I had. So, okay, thank you. Yeah, I have one uh, general comment to the authors when they talk about ADI. Um, is it in similar or uh, synonymous context to, uh, uh, for example, the indicators that are uh, existing, like ELI indicator, entropy label indicator, or? Is it a application uh, or a function indicator? Uh, because that I, I, I don't product. think we're specific. It is an indicator that there is something that you need to go and look at. Yeah, but then there is conflicting uh, statements that, you know, one indicator or or you know one indicator pointing to one ancillary data, and that's it. Uh, but one indicator can point to multiple ancillary data, for example. Uh -huh. Well, the way I understood uh, is it, it that uh, well, it depends on whether it's compound structure or not. The indicator or the ancillary data? Yeah, that's the confusion. Uh, is the indicator... Indicator, it's an indicator in the MPLS label stack that auxiliary data exists in the packet. I think that's all it's saying, isn't it? No, there are places where it says one indicator for one ancillary data. Uh, the, the single a single one and and that got me uh, you know I need to scroll to find the comment but mm. oh, I can look for a single okay uh, 
uh, yeah, it, it may indicate a specific type of ancillary data. So one ADI will indicate the specific type. Uh, so what uh, have what? So here's an interesting question. Is an ADI a, 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 an LSE or is an ADI a bit in an LSE? Uh -huh. Exactly said it. That's what I was trying to ask. Exactly, and I and I don't think at this level we are we 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 have we we have, we have got the we've defined it yet. I remember we discussed this and yeah. Stuart and and the um I think we came to the conclusion that we shouldn't limit it in the requirements. Indeed, because it could be a bit, or it could be you know we don't want we wouldn't want to preclude. At this stage, so, what what it was. So an ELI would be um, an ADI, but if we did one of these multi sort of indicator ADIs that Kariti talks about, then it would be the bit that was the ADI. So it would really be if it it would really be an ADI group indicator. The whole label would be an ADI group indicator, I suppose, and the uh, bits in it would be the indicators. And that is fine. I'm totally with you on this, uh, but there are some statements about the support or, you know, uh, an LSR needs to support or must support an ADI. Um, um, does it mean it supports all the applications? Pointed by the that I mean that's what we have to be careful. Uh, right. So 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 my philosophy, my MPLS philosophy, and it may not align with everyone else's, is uh, if you care about it, don't send the packet to that to a node that doesn't understand it. And then then yeah, that's you, a good you, point. Follow that? Yeah, I mean it, it, yeah, I mean it, the MPLS is not kind of the open internet where any packet might wander along. Packets should only go somewhere for a processing action if that somewhere knows how to do the processing action. And and you need to be well, it's a little bit, I don't know if it's that strict. What it, what it, I think we also partly the base requirement is don't send it somewhere that is going to do something bad to it. I or thought we thought it's going to do something bad to it. Like like it, don't send it somewhere that you think that that you think is going to discard it if you I, don't want that to happen. Or, 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 or don't send, send it, it don't send it somewhere for low latency treatment uh, because low latency treatment is important to your application um, to somewhere that can't do that. I mean, that would be bad and uh, we shouldn't have done it. Yeah, just, yeah. Just, just be aware of what can happen to it if it goes to the yeah. wrong place, I suppose. Yes. So. Folks, folks, can I make a quick interrupt? Yes. Uh, I think we started the discussion on the requirements spec now. Yes. And yes. I my suggestion is that we spend the rest of the meeting doing that, going through, going as far as we can, and then we just quit. Uh, the uh, question I have, the discussion we have had here on how, what is an indicator, uh, where can you send it, and things like that, is that sufficiently covered in the requirements spec as is? Um, I need to remember what's in the requirements spec, but um, remember this is and remember this is a team effort. Sure, sure. Yeah. I'm asking the team. So, so one of the things I think is that the requirements spec can only probably partially define what the indicator is because it's just a requirement spec. It needs something else like a require a framework draft that says read Indeed. what it is. Indeed. Uh, and a solution definition. Uh, so, yeah. uh, I mean, I mean, we're not uh, uh, our job. I think here is to lay out the things that the solution document needs to address and the parameters associated with the way it addresses it. But we're not designing it here. I don't think we're just setting out what 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 needs um, need to be imposed on the design. Stewart, I, I agree, and and this is why I left the comment that solutions should, I mean, we should not reference solutions out there in this draft. Right? Right. Okay, so yeah, I think. Uh, hmm. I, I don't know whether we, 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 whether we have, I can't remember what we put in there. Is it, it, yeah. We're going to have to go through a few rounds because at the moment, um, 
you know there are a lot of candidate solutions out there and you know, we need to describe this in a way that um neither endorses a solution at this stage nor eliminates a solution right exactly and sometimes you you have to call up those solutions to illustrate um a point that's that's not well known uh maybe we can reword the behavior yeah 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 i'm more than happy to do that okay okay all right uh, loa i i um I'm, I'm okay with whatever way you want to drive uh so i i can no i, ju I just want to continue now and see where it ends i i do have a comment on the issue that uh, was raised about uh, you know a function or uh yeah an application that uh, is not supported by a node uh you know a packet should not arrive there and i think we talked about you know that's per function behavior we can we can decide that it should be seamlessly forwarded if, if a legacy router um you know I, I should be able to forward a packet right hang on what do we mean by arrive um, because we need to be careful about to distinguish P router behavior from PE router behavior. Yeah, I, I'm, 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 you know, a, a P probably a transit node. Uh, I should be able to traverse a legacy. Right. So, so there are two cases, I think. One case is um, where the function is is nice to have, and the other case is where the function is essential. So an example of a nice to have might be timestamp when you saw this packet. Right. An example of essential might be uh, this packet must not continue if it has taken more than X microseconds to traverse the network. Hmm. And uh, and the reason why you might you would impose that sort of uh, second case might be that you know later on down the road you have uh, tight bandwidth issues, and so you don't want to clog up those links with packets that are just useless, and you can detect that they're useless earlier in the network, as an example. So, um, and it's just purely an example, right? So I, I I think we need to distinguish these two cases just in the same way that. You know, you, you you traffic engineer some 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 path, and um, um, in my view, repairing it best effort is stupid. Okay, I I like the way you've described it. I think uh, maybe that that you you want to make a distinguish uh, the distinguishment between uh, a packet arriving at a transit node versus arriving at a you know egress node. Yes. Uh, uh, the statement is not clear in the requirement document. Maybe you meant it that, that way. Maybe. Well, we need to work on it. Now, there's now I, I have a I have a view about transit nodes, which is that you can take a view on whether um, it's in, uh, it's in essential that you process this function at this node. I have a slightly harder line on PE nodes. Because a PE node has got to has got to process this this junk and get rid of it, and if it doesn't know how to get rid of it, it can't send it on anywhere else. So, for example, there's no point in sending an Ethernet pseudo wire to a node that uh, has got no Ethernet export interfaces, uh, only wants ATM, for example. All right, that would be that would be silly. And so you take a much tougher line that you never send a packet somewhere like that. Um, well, actually, because it was just going to discard it. Well, I don't know, because there's still a distinction probably at the PE, the, the, the egress PE between. There has to be a distinction between not being able to fulfill the function, not understanding the ADI. Yes, indeed. The application yeah, yeah, yeah. of the ADI, the function yeah. of the ADI and not being able to understand ADI's full stop. Or, or at least not be able to dispose of this particular feature as as the package. Right, right. Is. So, it, so, 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 then it may be that there's something that has to be done at the egress PE, as an example, yes. that is nice to have. Yes. It may be some cross classification, as an example. Right. Uh, we're trying to kind of indicate through the ADI. So you might. It may be that it, that that you want to. Um, You're right. They're the same, aren't they? You still want to forward the service. Yeah, you don't want to dump the packet. You still want to forward the service, but you just can't achieve it. Just can't achieve 
of that function. No, no, you're you're, you're exactly the, you're you're right. They are actually exactly the 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 manifestation and and the processing is different, but the requirement is the same. That you need, you, you better not send a packet to a PE that can't at least dispose of this and continue with the service. Yeah, um, and it's up to you whether that whether you whether you regard it with any importance the information the the ancillary data that was carried. Yeah, so so it feels like to me that you that we, we should say something like you must not send it to a, a node that doesn't understand ADIs. Doesn't, yes, you know, so it's going to so for example, it's not you mustn't send it to a node. Let's say it's as an example, it's a special purpose label. And I think if you understand right. special purpose label, then you can yes. you can discard the packet. Um, at the egress anyway, uh, so, so we need to distinguish between what not understanding that alert mechanism. So, and, and not understanding or not being able to fulfill the application and, it, and, and being able to fulfill the application may or may not be important to you. Yeah. So it's perfectly okay to send it somewhere that may not be able to fulfill the application. If you're okay with that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So and also not disappointed that nothing happened. Yes. Yeah, but you but you probably need to make sure that that at least your packet is not going to be dropped without knowing it's going to be dropped. So you know, don't send it to a, a node that um, doesn't understand doesn't understand the basic ADI thing is going to toss the packet. That said, the inverse is also true that the packet the node shouldn't fall over if it gets one of these. Well, I hope not. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't want to crash a router with these, um, but. So I, maybe we need to go and revisit this this distinction, or we need to clarify in the body of the text this distinction. Yeah, I think I think so. I'll probably just clarify this distinction between um, uh, essential and nice to have. Yeah, it's like, it's like support for it. It's like uh, understanding ADIs or, or understanding the auxiliary data. You have to do something with the auxiliary data that you, you know that's that's intended. Um, so, so this is in the definition yeah, section. Sorry. We probably need to have have a real section that discusses this. Yeah. If there isn't one. Okay. Uh, while well, while you're thinking about that, there is a comment from Kiran in the in the chat. Okay. And it says, "Man." Basically, said we should only talk about ancillary data. We should not talk about ADAs. Um, no, I'm not sure I agree. Um, <clears throat> um, we we do need to talk about what the concept of an ADI is. We haven't. We're not specifying how you implement an ADI, but I think we need to talk about the concept so that uh, people understand that. Um, we may or may not want to require that you're told that there's this information in the packet uh, before you go find it. And also remember some ADIs indicate information that's actually in the label stack itself. So I don't think it's unreasonable to talk about ADIs. We need to make sure that we don't tie anyone up in knots uh, and, and, and limit the, 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 the ability for the working group to ha make a decision about how to execute the ADI. But I do think we need to talk about the concept. Besides, there seems to be a desire to not, it, is, it does seem to be a desire to create some kind of, to have a requirement in there that stops us consuming large numbers of special purpose labels as ADIs. So, yes, at least we will have something in there related, you know, like our existing requirement that says don't consume lots of special purpose labels. Uh, Kiran, do you want to comment? I'm still thinking about it. Um, I, according to me, ancillary data should be self describing. So, for, at least from the requirements perspective, and that's why I did not see any need for it. And it's the presence of ancillary data will be can be done in many different ways so that's why i thought it is not mandatory so so can i just understand something kieran you said AD, auxiliary data needs to be self describing that's a, did you mean that in, in the sense that when you find it you know what it is or do you mean that well so MPLS has got a tradition of not having self-describing information. 
and it's not clear to me whether uh, you determine what the a, ancillary data is by looking at the ancillary data or from something outside the system which tells you what it is in the same way that an MPLS label tells you how to process the packet and the you can't tell abstractly from the from the label what to do only if you're given the mapping yeah I think exactly that is the disconnect uh, what I see requirements as some kind of framework which is independent of what is mandated by MPLS for example you're saying that the data is not self-describing so you have an assumption that how MPLS works and based on that you're describing that okay we need ADI right. and from requirements perspective when we're designing a framework all I'm saying is it's not necessary. Maybe I use some kind of control plane mechanism to indicate this thing. If I have a closed system, then yes. maybe I come up with a solution where you don't even need this flag. Well, I think the thing is that this work is, or this mechanism is in the scope, of, is in the context of MPLS. Right. Um, even if it was broader than that, say it was an IPv6 data plane, um, You'd still need. You still need some context that comes from elsewhere. For example, in SLV six, you need a. You need a SID structure, so, so to understand what the function is. So, um, yeah. Is would it not be just sufficient to say that there should be an indicator to describe that we have ancillary data rather than going into the details of it? Well, um. So there are there are cases either way. I mean, one way is to say there is ancillary data and go find it and figure it out. Another way, <clears throat> you know, another valid architectural decision is that you say what sort there is there, so you can determine whether it's something that worries you or not. So, for example, let's take the case of um, IOAM indicator. All right, so. Uh, it could be that you um, you get an ancillary data uh, an indicator, and then you go back and find, you go down and later on find out it's about um, IOAM. But I don't understand IOAM, so I didn't need to waste my time going down here. Whereas, for example, you could have indicated at the top there is IOAM metadata uh, ancillary data for you to process, and you can take a decision at that point. Oh, I don't need to bother with that. So it's two, there's two ways, and I don't know which the right way is. I mean, that's for us to work through as part of the design process, and there are advantages and disadvantages both ways. Okay, uh, I'll read the document in more detail, and uh, if we can come up with a better wording, I'll let you guys know. Thank you. And if you want to set up some time to discuss any of the detail, then let us know as well. Okay. I do have another comment, which, um, you know, I, I didn't understand why the statement was worded this way. Maybe, maybe it's true statement, but, you know, do you want to clarify? I'll give you a you know, chance to, you're mentioning the mechanism to indicate uh, the ancillary data presence must operate in the context of the top label. So why indicating the presence must operate in the context? Uh, maybe it's, mm, I'll try to understand it. So, I, 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 you know, maybe uh, that's too strong a term, but MPLS currently operates everything in the context of the top label. And if you operate in the context of the top label, you get the ability to redefine um, things in, in the context of that top label um, to do what is right. Um, for this application, so the 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 entropy label kind of broke that model, but everything else is done in the context of the top label. And I'm not sure whether entropy label did a good thing or a bad thing when it operated. I the jury's a bit out on that, but um, the everything else that happens happens within the context of the top label. So, so I fretted a bit over this because um, I, I thought a lot about the entropy label case, and I'm, I'm not sure it breaks it really. Because although you can you can scan the stack, and you if you spot an 
Take an LSR, and if you spot an entropy label, you can then make a, um, a load balancing decision based on the. Yeah. If you spot the the ELI in the stack, you, you it's perfectly okay to make an, a load balancing decision solely based on the following entropy label. But it's optional. But it's optional, but I mean it's allowed. But but the next hop still has to be valid for the top label, right? Yes. So, the whole thing is still in, if you take the word, depends on how literally you take in the context of the top label. Mm. What I mean is it doesn't necessarily have to be triggered by the top label, it, but it has to still, the, the forwarding still has to be valid from the, the perspective of the top label and the normal label swap. <coughs> well, so, I, and any other additional things that you want to do, I think. Yeah, yeah. So you can't send the packet somewhere where the, the top label that arrives is not valid. So, uh, Matthew, a, a clarification, uh, um, and I heard you, um, what you're describing about the entropy label, like, if there is a function, uh, would it, uh, would it, um, the function output, uh, you think would be different if the top label is different? Um, let's say the function is a natting function, or whatever a function is, uh, do you think if the top label is uh, X or Y, uh, you will get a different result? And should we mandate that? Maybe there is a function that is independent of the top label. Well, yes. I mean, it, well, <clears throat> it depends on how we want to um, to do it. But yes, you could. You could um, use the. You you could make the behavior of the ancillary data, and indeed the meaning of the things that point to the ancillary data or indicate the ancillary data. You could all make that happen in the context of the LSP if you wanted. Hmm. I see. And and MP, MPLS operates really in the context of the LSP. Yeah, so the whatever you do to it, wherever you send that packet, it's got to be wherever it goes has to be valid a valid LS pro, properly programmed LSP at that point. Otherwise, it's just going to drop it. It doesn't, mm. you know. Yeah, makes sense. But would the function output be different if you? It could be. Uh, it could be. It could be. Yeah, yeah. You could change the top label based on the function, I suppose. To right, but, right. It. Well, well, no, you could change the meaning of the function based on the top label as well. So, for example, yeah. um, you could bind the description of the um, ancillary data to the top label. But if you do that, you really need to describe it when you define uh, the ancillary data. No, you need to describe it when you describe when you create the LSP. I think. Right. So there is uh, the, the control plane. It becomes responsible for the mapping. Um, MPLS is all about control plane mapping of of uh, labels to functions. So, um, hi guys. I'm sorry. I'm I joined late. Um, this would make life very difficult for someone who's writing this code or writing the microcode for this. The meaning of a special purpose label does not change based on the context of the LSP. Um, a router alert is a router alert or an. Uh, know, but no one said SPL here yet, have they? No, no one said what? No one said SPL, I don't think, in this discussion. Did no, they? no, I, I, what I'm saying is that not everything in MPLS has a meaning that's dependent on the context of the label of the LSP. Mm. So for, for I mean... Well, if, hang on, router you... alert operates in the context of the LSP, doesn't it? No, a router alert is a router alert. Right, uh, and you're going to, and you're going to. Well, I suppose it's true, but you are still. I still believe you're operating in the context of the of the LSP that it's on. Uh, the the meaning of router alert is take the packet out of the data plane, send it to the control plane. It does not right. matter what the context is. The meaning of right, so, um, so, so oh, the packet dies at that point. Can I ask a question here? Yeah. Um, start. Are you saying in the context? Do you mean like if I have some um, auxiliary data or some special purpose label, 
the function or the meaning of it may change depending on other labels and other ancillary uh, data. I, I, I think so. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'll give you an example where this happens. The okay. meaning of the IP packet that follows a, uh, a an MPLS VPN bottom of stack is fundamentally determined by the bottom of stack label. So, uh, okay, so can I say that's like, um, you may have the same IP address right inside a WARF, right? Depend on which WARF you are in, you send it to different WARFs. Yes. But that, uh, the, the meaning of that WARF label, the one identify which WARF to send, to send the packet to, stays the same, always. Um, let's think. So I, 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 I push the WARF label. That tells me what table to go and look up the the IP packet that follows, doesn't it? Yes. So yes, exactly. So that label always means which table you go to look up, right? And then, right. On, on, on that node, on that node, on not, that not, node, yes. You go to a different node, and that would get you to a completely different table, or maybe get you to a pseudo wire, or may get you, you know, because it all because they all come out of the global label table. So, so but my, still the, the action for that label is the same. You go look up some tables inside this router, right? Inside that node. Yeah, yeah, yes. And then the outcome might be different. That's no hang, hang on. Look, so so you uh, let's see if we're in the same page. Um you look up a label in the global label table, and it says, you know what? This is a VRF um, indicator. Right. Uh, you look up the same label in a different uh, router and it means something completely different, either a different table or a completely different function. So the processing of the data that follows is in the context of the top of stack. Maybe I'm confused. Well, uh, th I mean, that's, that's, that's a function of the fact that labels are local to the node. Indeed. Uh, so. Uh, you know, label 100 means different things on different nodes. But, Indeed. Uh, right, but that, that, that doesn't mean the, 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 the label that is identifying a WARF actually differently on different nodes. They still use that label. To no, they look at completely whether different Whether it's 100 tables. or 200, it doesn't matter. It's just if it's a WARF label, you know it's used to, uh, to identify the action, you need to go look up the right table. Right, but you don't. The, the binding happens at the last minute. Right, so so uh, two hundred on that's the outcome of the the action. Right, you went to you. Okay, that's the label I need to do my forwarding. So, um, so I think the sort of fundamental here is is about how much of the sort of binding of information to action is baked into the protocol versus is mapped into the protocol through the through the control plane where the control plane could be anything from static provisioning all the way to, through um, sdn through to a dynamic control plane so i think that's one of the things that we need to get our heads around how much are we going to bake into the design versus how much are we going to introduce into the design through a mapping function and everything else in MPLS except for one or two special purpose labels um, happens through a mapping function. One follow up, uh, Stuart. Uh, so, yeah, indeed, we talked about um, control plane programmable action or uh, right. application and then uh, a standardized uh, application. Um, you know, function uh, right. um, in a bit. So the standardized one, I would be very concerned uh, if you want to standardize per top label uh, context. You know, the function meaning changes. Uh, depending. Well, hmm. it's, 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 independent. It, uh, it, it, it's a bit more. 
I think it needs a bit more deep thought um, here, yeah. doesn't it, really? I mean, yeah. um, pseudo wires and VPNs are examples where the action is well known, but the context of the action is provided by a label. So, so it, lots of nodes how, know how to do Ethernet pseudo wire, but they don't know how to do this particular Ethernet pseudo wire unless they have a label that instructs them. Instructs them. And then that's fine, but must putting a must there, I think uh, maybe I can operate without the dot label. The the function doesn't care. Yeah, no, we need to. I think I think this definitely needs some deep deep thought. I think. Okay. Um, one other thing I'd say not... is that it's not necessarily in the context of the label. Um, it's in the context of the control plane that sent you the label. So if you were to take um, the VPN label again and you were not doing PHP, um, yes. you would have a top label that is essentially going to be just thrown away. Yep. Um, and but the fact that the, the the next label is a VPN label was signaled via BGP or it's a pseudo wire yeah. label, it was signaled via yeah. LDP. So yeah. the label stands on its own, but what its meaning is is associated to it by the control plane protocol. Not in see when you say it's in the context of the top label, um, that concerns me because the meaning of a label yeah. then depends on a lot of different things. Indeed. Whereas typically in MPLS, the meaning of a label was assigned by the control plane that said, by the way, when you see label 52, <coughs> it uh, it's a uh, VPN label or it's a pseudo right. label. Um, so, so I think that's a slightly different meaning than to say it's in the context. I mean, otherwise you'd say, look at the entire sort of history of the labels that you popped off the stack before you can interpret this particular label. So to say that the meaning of a label is in the context of the control plane that, you know, through which it was exchanged yeah. is something I'm a little more inclined to accept than to say it's in the context of the top label. We do have things called context labels, uh, where a, the meaning of a label, um, especially for you know upstream allocated labels, um, is in the context of uh, the label that was above it. But right. that's a special case. Um, that's because you need upstream allocation as opposed to the typical usual thing that we do, which is downstream allocation. Let's so, think about this. Let's just um yeah it's a, so if you take a, a a label that's instructing some action to pe yeah you could argue that that operated in the context of the label that preceded it because it wouldn't have got to this node unless that label had the, the label had the, the steering label had preceded it so but but they're independently processed the fact that, I mean, especially if you're doing global yeah, labels. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean that global labels are a discussion we need to, 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 to have, and and uh, we should only enter the global label. You, you mean the, you mean real global labels, or do you mean global the global table? No, no I mean global table for a particular node. Oh, okay, okay. So we need to be no, really, really. I'm just paranoid about yeah, us yeah. accidentally allowing global labels without explicitly deciding we're going to do it. No, 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 no. I don't mean that. But if I'm, you know, if I'm a particular node, um, most of the labels that come to me, I have allocated. Yes. Uh, so, uh, you know, somebody sent me a BGP message saying, hey, I need a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or uh, you know, I used LDP or RSVP. Mm -hmm. I allocated the label, and so I have the space, and I say I'm going to allocate 100 label 100 for that particular mm -hmm. BRF. I'm going to allocate label 300 for that particular LSP. I'm going to swap it mm -hmm. with yeah. 301 and send it to a particular guy. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. so all of that, the labels meaning is local or just within the label itself. It's not in the context of anything else. 
uh, and that meaning was assigned, um, you know, via the control plane protocol. Mm. Unlike unlike context labels, where mm-hmm. I'm going to get a label that I didn't allocate uh, for for multicast or you know whatever, yeah. and that is a very different thing, and that is used in a very much smaller number of cases. I think the value of MPLS is I control which labels come to me. And in this, in the one case of context labels, I do not control that. It's imposed on me because of, you know, requirements of the, of the data plane. <clears throat> so I... Right. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you won't have got it unless you understood those. You shouldn't have got the packet unless you understood those context labels, of course. Yes, yes. Yes. So, I mean, what we're struggling with, I think, here is how to make sure that we operate within the MPLS architecture as it exists today and only knowingly make changes um, um, to it rather than accidentally make changes to it. Because well, we know, I, I, I don't want to end up, I, I, don't, I don't think we should try it. We, we, should, we should be careful not to end up in a place that we didn't expect to get to. So I, I get that, but at the same time, I think special purpose labels have a fixed meaning independent of where they occur in the stack and independent right. of uh, any other context. It's not a meaning assigned to the label by the router. So if if you were to say, hey, send me a VRF label, I could say, I'll just pick one. But, you know, label, you know, one or label zero have fixed yeah. meanings. So I, I don't think that everything that we do has to be um, in the context of the routing protocol that, or, or the control plane that exchange the label. Um, so we can have labels that have fixed meaning. And that's why I said, you know, I was pre- prefacing this by, <clears throat> if you say that the meaning of a label is, you know, determined by the control plane, that's a more powerful thing, but MPLS, clearly said we're going to do that we're going to do that with the vast majority of labels but we're going right. to hold aside these 16 labels and give them special right. meaning so everyone knows exactly how to process right. them and, and we only do that um as a mechanism of last resort otherwise we'd have burnt through them years ago so we right, only right. ever use a fixed one of those tiny number of fixed labels um or presumably one of those really harder much harder to process uh longer special purpose labels we only really do want to do that if there's no alternative to doing it well i would put it differently because i think one of the things that we we can achieve via the indicator bits is that we can take the same special purpose label and give it multiple meanings but again the meanings are fixed at least if you take the FAI as it stands today, what we're saying is, and I'm not saying that we should have that solution, um, but I'm saying that the the what the FAI says today is, I will have a fixed special purpose label with, with a meaning, but the meaning of that special purpose label is augmented by these indicator bits. And those are also you know, uh, fixed yeah. meanings. Yeah. So if you say the first bit is entropy label and the second bit, uh, entropy indicator and the second bit is a uh, slice indicator and the third yeah. bit is a no, FFR, no FRR indicator. Um, what you're basically saying is that very tiny space that we have of special purpose labels, I'm going to expand that space by the indicator. Uh, bits, right. But the still the meaning is independent of where this thing all occurs. So, um, there are two possibilities. One possibility is we bake them in and we have a, a limited um, number. We may or may not get them right and we may need to expand to a second one, etc. Or we make the meaning in the context of the LSP, which would give us the option of changing the meaning if that's what we wanted to do. And the packet has got no business being somewhere where you know the the that definition hadn't been pre-injected so if so you again, make the, the, the meeting the context is global in the network it doesn't have to be lsp context i mean well well I mean, it's a, that's a design decision for us actually yeah 
I'm a white, white seated. So, that's why I want to come back that... to the context of the control thing, because yeah. if, if you think of uh, in the FAI, we have this thing that we, I forget what we ended up calling it, but at one point we were calling it policy based. Yes. So yeah. you're saying that the context or the meaning of this indicator bit and the meaning of the associated data depends on what uh, was given to it by the control plane. So yes. it's not in the context of the LSP, yeah. but it's in, in the context of the control plane that said, by the way, router 72, if you get this and you see that bit set, the meaning of the associated data, the ancillary data is blah, blah, blah. And it's right. not assigned by mm -hmm. The MPLS working group, it's not a sign, you know, for all time. No, indeed, indeed. It, I, and I don't quite know how to articulate this all in, in a way uh, um, that's crystal clear at the moment. But so, I, 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 stop I, I, at, I, I think what? the confusing point you say in the context of LSP, my understanding is that label, the, the meaning of that label will change because of the label stack is different. Yes. And that's and how MPLS I, works. Yeah. No, that's not how MPLS works. Um, like I said, mostly the meaning of the label is the control plane that ex uh, exchanged the label, not yes. the previous label that came, except for the rare, relatively rare occurrence of context labels, literally context labels. So I, I think I'm uh, in, in tune with Ying Xian that the meaning of the label is in the context of the control plane that exchanged that label, not right. in the context exactly. of the LSP. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So, how would we deal with this? So, we're in the middle of the network. Um, we need to bind some meanings to these indicators. Would we want to bind it to a node, or would we, if we bound it to the LSP, then um we would be free to have different versions of this as and when we needed them whereas if we bind them to the node i'm not quite sure how this works because that you have to have a network-wide definition yes and that was one of the things we were struggling with when we talked about yeah. po policy-based meaning or yes. you know, control plane based meaning because everyone would have to have the same interpretation that interpretation of bit seven in the indicator flags. Yes. Um, one approach is bit seven always means it's an entropy uh, indicator. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But another interpretation is bit seven uh, means go look up to your point about the mapping. Go yes. look up, and it says, oh, bit seven is actually you know blah 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 indicator, and yep. everyone would have to interpret that the same. Otherwise, this will get very difficult well, to well, manage. Everyone would need to interpret the same along the LSP. A different LSP could have a different interpretation. <laughs> True, but um, I think life would be difficult if you did that. Um, because, for example, you don't control ECMP. And so if you if you were to send it, you know, if the choice between, you know, after node A, you can go to node B or node C, and then you better, on... yeah, you better make sure it's the same across all of those paths. So I think, right. I, I think to some extent, this is the difference between um, uh, multi point to point and a point to point um, domain. And I suspect all the really fancy things are more likely to happen on a well, you know, a completely engineered point to point path. Yeah, but even for a completely engineered point to point path, um, if you were. So we, we have cases um, where you're um, you have a lag uh, and yeah. it isn't a lag going, you know, between the same yeah. pair of nodes. Um, so if you have a multi chassis lag, for example, yes, it's an engineered path and this is how you're going, but you could end up in uh, one of two nodes or one of several nodes. But the, the high order bit is we can assign a fixed meaning to an indicator or we can assign a fixed meaning to a label um, or we can assign a meaning that's, you know, that's given to the label via the control plane. 
but assigning a meaning to the label based on this label stack that it's in, I think that it's a it's a higher level of generality, but I think it's something that's much harder to to deal with and program carefully. So, so that phrase in the context of the LSP is what bothers, uh, what scares me. In the context of the control plane that exchanges this label is something that I've lived with my entire MPLS life. Does that make sense? Uh, to me, uh, it just makes total sense, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, 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 I could probably live with that. I need to think about it. But um, yeah, I, I could live with it being in the context of the control plane. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what Ying Chan is saying. Yes, exactly. So I just don't want to, uh, in the context of the uh, okay. RST, give me like the feeling I have to read the there. whole label stack in and in order to understand, okay, what this label 100 means. No, you have to read the top, in the original text that we had, you had to read the top label to understand what, what that meant. Mm. Like I said, that's something yeah, yeah. that you only do for context labels. Right. Um, it's not a, it's something that, to your point, the original MPLS architecture never had that. We had to invent that context label mechanism because of upstream allocation. And while the original MPLS architecture talked about upstream and downstream allocation, then everything devolved to downstream allocation and allocation, Indeed. the meaning being allocated by the control plane, uh, independent of you know where um you know, where well it was always done by the control yeah. plane, so, wasn't it? It's just that it got downstream because one of the control planes operated like that. So for that, you, you may say, okay, I might use label 100 or I might use label 200 to forward to uh, like a, one in particular, one interface. So it, whether you use 100 or 200, it doesn't matter, right? It's just that label means a forwarding action. That doesn't change. <clears throat> so that, 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 contact, that action doesn't change in the context of other labels. That's what okay, I like. except except for, yeah. for for upstream allocated labels and context yeah. labels. Yeah. So the vast majority of labels that we use either have a fixed meaning and that that's a special purpose labels, or they have a meaning that I allocated to it and told you about via the control plane. But mm -hmm. then they don't have yes, a meaning yes. in the context yeah. of the top label. Yes, that's what I meant. Yeah. Is that true? I'm just trying to think. H hang on a second. Um, is that really Put it this way? If I were to hand out label one hundred, um, you know, is look up, look up this packet in this VRF. Yes. It doesn't matter what the top label is, and so if I were to get label one hundred from P router A. Or if I were to get label 100 from P or B, that label 100 was imposed by my fellow PE at the other end of the network. Right, and, I, and whichever way it came to me, with whichever top label or whichever label stack it came to me, it doesn't matter. But I that label push... was assigned, the meaning of the label was assigned by BGP, not by the context of the label stack. But you only processed it when it was the top label. So by definition, you're processing. Or, you know. No, because I could have done a, if I'm doing UHP, I removed the top label. The top yes. label told me this came on this RCP LSP because I, I want to keep stats for that particular LSP. Yes. I then popped that top label, threw it away. I don't, all I used the top label was for statistics um, to say this was on yep. this RCP LSP. And then I process the next label completely You're not going, independent. Uh, uh, but hang on a second. So here's where I was getting worried, right? So we're not talking. We're talking about not processing the top label when we do some of these uh, ADIs. We're talking about looking at a label further down, aren't we? Yes, yes, yes. But but that's and and uh, um and the question is. 
does that have an absolute definition or does that have a definition that is imposed by the control plane in its own right or controlled by imposed by the control plane in the in conjunction with the preceding label so um, today, most of the labels that we use are independent of the label stack that they're in. Right, but that's not what we're, what we are, we're building a new thing here. Uh, but, but what I'm saying is that I think even in building the new thing, we can, Im we can have pretty general semantics without saying, oh, the meaning of this depends on the label stack that that's pushed or that's above it or the top label <clears throat> the top level is one instance if if this particular thing that i'm looking at let's say it's a fai label again just yeah. for argument's sake um i'm looking at this label you know three or ten labels deep i could say that the meaning of that label depends you know it's something that it has intrinsically um either it's a well-defined label or it's in the context of a control plane that defines the meaning of that. Or I could say it's the meaning of that label, you know, five into the label, five deep in the label stack, depends on the top label, or it depends on all the labels that came before it. There's no reason why the top label has to be special. Anything that you say where the meaning depends on the labels above it, I think would be very hard to control because uh, the label stack comes and goes and depending on which direction i mean just because you triggered fast read out you put a few more labels so that you can go yeah. a different path now if the meaning changes i don't know how you manage this network whereas if you say the meaning is fixed yes it's pretty restrictive if you say the meaning stands on its own but it's determined by the control plane i think it's much oh, more I general could live, i i could live with that yes i could live with that Think think that's okay. Okay, so so I I think that's where uh, Ying Shen and I are coming from, um, and maybe I don't know um, if Tarek is in the same space, but that's that's kind of where we are today with MPLS. That the meaning of a label is not fixed for all time. The vast majority of labels that we use are fixed via the control plane, but they are independent of where they occur in the stack. So you could have a situation where you have a, you know, several layers of hierarchical LSPs all ending up at this PE. And so as, as you're looking at the label stack, you keep popping things saying, oh, I just ended this label, uh, this LSP, I ended this LSP, I ended this LSP, I ended this LSP. And finally, you can come to that label 100 and say, oh yeah, that's a VRF label. I don't care how many labels I popped off the stack and and. Well, no, I understand away. where the confusion. I understand where the confusion is. Okay. Um, okay. So, so and in part, it's because my definition of the top of stack is if you've thrown all this other, if you're not going to process this label until you've thrown everything else away, then by definition you're operating in the context of the top of stack. So the question Go. is. So start, I think what you really meant in the context of the top label, not in the context of the stack. I think we said top label, didn't we? I mean, maybe we, uh, maybe we said... I think it was top label. Uh, but, but either way, I'm not okay with the top LSE. Uh, yeah, I, I would say in the context of the control plane, not in the context of the top label. Uh, I, I would say um, it's an option. Uh, uh, putting it in the context control plane, it can work without any context. Like you said, the route alert is does not need a context, does it? Sure, sure. So the two the two things that I have seen and I'm comfortable with is it's a fixed meaning or it's a meaning in the context of the control plane. There is a, a case for it's in the meaning of the label that came above it for context labels, but that's a very spe specific use of that. Right. The vast majority of the use of labels in MPLS are either it's a fixed meaning or it's a meaning assigned to it by the control plane independent of where it occurs in the stack. All right, it, it sounds like we need to do some wording amongst ourselves, including you guys, um, on this, the semantics of this piece of text. 
Do you, I, I can um, log in any feedback. I, I felt free to, to reply and log in a couple of comments uh, I heard. And yes. if you want the, the editors, if you want, I can log in or you feel free to, to uh, you know, uh, put action items for yourself. Uh, I don't think either of us are actually, are you in GitHub doing uh, in edit mode, Matthew? Because I'm not in um, edit mode here. No, I'm not in edit mode or anything. Um, so rather than let us experimentally verify whether we can log into this and make changes, um, Karen, sure. could you make the change? Could you make the notes for us, please? Oh yeah, definitely. Thank you. I mean, let, let me know whenever you want me to uh, uh, add an action item to you to the editor. Um, I do have another one which requires some clarification. Uh, um here is a here's a statement the solution must support the processing of subset of adis which is uh, good uh, i like that that means only a subset I, i'm not sure what is meant by a subset of adis but it contradicts with the previous requirement saying that neither an adi or ancillary data must be delivered to a node not capable of processing it so subset means some of them might not be supported but here we're saying we sh we yeah, not I, think, I think this needs modifying in the context of the discussion we had earlier about um, nice to have versus um, must uh, have. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, this is not right. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, um, yeah. It, you, you must have meant something by as close to the label stack as possible, maybe top of the label stack or bottom of the label stack, maybe uh, in order to prevent unnecessary scanning of the yeah, package. about unnecessary scanning, it should be top of the label oh. stack. Okay, I, I uh, think these are the debatable ones. Uh, I think we spoke about uh, this, uh, the fact that an ADI, so here's a statement where it says, each ADI supports only one application. I'm fine with the way Stuart and Matthew were talking about an ADI being a bit, uh, but when we mean an ADI to be a compound grouping of bits, then it becomes, uh, Misleading. Uh, yeah, I know this is this is um something that we need to have defined really as what well. yes. a little bit more about what an ADI really is. So for me, the the difference is that um, if you say everything is bits, then they stand alone, and you know you're scanning each bit independently. So um, from a control plan, from a data plane processing, it's easier but it's not maybe as efficient. <clears throat> so if I, I mean, when I was doing the EG bits, which is uh, a two bit flag that talks about entropy label and uh, slice indicator, um, you could just say there is an entropy label, yes or no, there's a slice indicator, yes or no. But <clears throat> by using the two bit combination, um, you're able to express more, like there is an entropy label and a slice uh, label and they happen to be, um, you know, 16 bits each, or they happen to be 32 bits each. So that more generality that you get by treating it as a two bit flag um, comes with a problem that when you're processing it, if you don't know what it is, um, you know, you have to know to skip over both those bits. Uh, but I think it's, it's a nice uh, optimization that uh, in the context of a, uh, an information restricted area, like, you know, trying to fit everything into a label <clears throat> and you have these 32 bits or 31 bits or 30 bits to work with. Uh, I think that optimization is nice. Treating the, them as independent flags is easier, sort of in some sense, but um, you, you lose some efficiency in compacting or, or transferring information.
Well, uh, I, I don't agree with this claim that it uh, will make uh, it easier. So as I uh, said, I did some in-depth analysis on the actual um, cluster implementation. Uh, it shows that it, you know when you uh, use the bitmaps to indicate the applications that uh, that doesn't help at all. But uh, uh, it uh, introduces a lot of limitations, make it inflexible and uh, limit the extensibility. So yeah, I, I will uh, if I uh, have time in the future meetings, I will give a, a presentation about that uh, to show why why it is like that. So uh, I guess I'm not talking about any implementation. I'm just saying if you, again, with a very concrete example of the E and G bits, if I have two bits to work with <clears throat> and I code them independently, I basically get to say there is an entropy uh, indicator, yes or no. There is a slice indicator, yes or no. But if I yeah, combine them into one two-bit yeah. flag, I can actually encode many more options. Um, and so that's that's why I like multi-bit flags. Uh, I, I, that's all I'm saying. I'm, it's not about I'm implementing this in P4 or implementing this on Broadcom. I'm just talking about the conceptual level. Yeah, I I think we do need to consider why we introduce this feature because uh, uh, for the entropy label, uh, they, they are self-explainer trees, so, um, which means you, you, you don't need an indicator, you can, you, you just uh, uh, pass the label stack, you will find it uh, without any ambiguity. Um, so in that sense, this uh, bit is uh, redundant. We just have a, a feeling that it might help if you know in the once, but uh, actually uh, from the point of view, it doesn't help. So that's my so, point. So, uh, I mean, uh, I, I don't understand. Uh, forget the entropy label indicator, the ELI, you know, label value seven. I'm not talking about special purpose labels. I'm saying if you have a single special purpose label saying there's stuff going on here, and then you have a bunch of uh, bits saying what exactly that stuff is, then you need to know whether there is an entropy uh, value in the stack in the in the label stack below where there's a, a slice indicator value so the, the what associated data there is uh, uh, associated with this um, you know with the adis that you need to know all i'm saying is when you do that if you do it bit by bit you get a certain level of information transfer if you do it flags where the multi-bit flags, you get more or potentially more information. Okay, so you, so you mean there will be no further uh, uh, identification for each uh, the meaning of each label. So you, you just use this uh, flag to tell them. The, there's no further what? I mean, I mean, uh, you know, you just uh, have a give the different semantics to the. Uh, some some labels uh, and uh, uh, you have to rely on this uh, flags to tell what they are. Is that what you mean? Yeah, I mean the basically the flag is a conden condensation of the older. Um, you know, when you had an entropy label indicator, you have a full an SPL that whose only job is to say, by the way, the next label is in the stack is the entropy value. <clears throat> and if you had, um, as was being uh, proposed by um, the, the folks doing network slicing, they said, oh, we can have a special purpose label, a new one <clears throat> that says okay, that yeah. the next label yeah. is I, a slice indicator. Instead of I, having I, special purpose labels all over the place, I'm saying you have one special purpose label, and then you have these bits, either bits or flags that say, Yes, the next label is an uh, entropy value. The label after that is a slice value. So that's that's the purpose of the indicators. That instead of burning five um, 
special purpose labels, you burn one and then you have five bits or five flags. I, uh, I, that's, uh, I, I think that's uh, a kind of uh, encoding style for the in-stack data. You, 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 now you cannot say the following um, uh, data still labels. Uh, actually, they are just uh, some, you, you define a, uh, a, a new header format in the label stack. It's a basically uh, like one label plus one special label with flags plus uh, a bunch of uh, uh, data, data words. Yes, Something exactly. Like yeah. But, but uh, my question is, uh, um, just for the case of uh, um, entropy label, there already um, exists already standard for, for that, right? Um, but here but you are suggesting a different uh, way to, to, to do that. So uh, for entropy label, yes, there is, but we achieve that at the cost of burning uh, a whole special purpose label. We've already done it, it's done. But um, yeah. for all these new functions that people want, if we do the same, we'll run out of special purpose labels. So but, but, instead of burning yeah. a new special purpose label, what we're saying is burn one special purpose label and then indicate yeah. which of those things you want with bits, with flags. But yeah, but my question is do we really want to define new functions using? A label concept. Why? Why don't we just uh, um, make make them all uh, ancillary data after the uh, stack? If we have a, a unified mechanism to do that, then we, we don't need to just pack everything in the label stack. I think that will complicate the the parser because um, basically it's introduced some um, different um, formatted data into the label stack. It's so a, that's a separate discussion. Um, the the um, I've I've tried to say this, but I, I think this was on today's agenda. Unfortunately, I joined late. Um, what do you put in the label stack, and what do you put after the label stack and um, post stack data, and how do you choose? Um, for me, the value of putting something in the label stack is that you don't have to process the entire label stack to get to the information that you need. So if on a hop by hop basis, you need to know what is a slice so that I treat the packet correctly, then you don't need to go to the bottom of the stack to do that. You can, you know, hopefully within the first four, three, four labels, you can find it. That's the value. To, to the, Thing that we were looking just a little bit earlier, um, that that Tarek just put in, uh, you know, close to the label stack, close to the top of label stack. That's where you say, I want this information in a place where I can reach it easily, so I can uh, use it on a hop by hop basis. Okay, so 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 uh, yeah, I just I also uh, dial in late today. You still use the old time. Uh, I don't uh, follow what's uh, what's discussed uh, in the first hour. But uh, yeah, um, I, I think it's okay. Now we just uh, list all the um, possibilities. But uh, I think for each each one, we do need to consider uh, what say its implication and. Uh, whether yeah. it introduce a real benefit or not. So, so it's top is where we, top is the, is, is, you're, you're quite right, Tarek, we missed the top out. I did, uh, I did add it as a comment. Yeah, 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 yeah. you're right, we missed top out, that's what we meant. Okay. Uh, do we want to switch to another, I, 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 by the way, we still have five minutes, I mean, um, if uh, we have, I have, uh, I have what I think is two very quick comments. Yes, Can please, I take them? Yep. One one is for Stuart. Uh, the requirements spec references a prime address. Oh, I better refresh that, hadn't I? No, yeah, but does it mean that you actually commit to take it to ROC? Uh, it, it could if, if, if it's um a an informational reference. No, it doesn't. So we would take it to uh, RFC or not, according to the you know the, the consensus of the community, and I'm happy either way. Uh, but we could. No, actually, that's still... not. Yeah, no, and that's really what I'm asking. I can actually, we can uh, legitimately reference it as an informative reference, even as just as if it never becomes anything other than an ID. 
Okay, that's fine. Uh, I, I actually asked him a little bit about the, work, the, the amount of work that we need to put in there. Uh, because as it is now, it's pretty much your uh, description of what actually happened. And I'm fine with other people contributing. There's no uh, okay. No so, but, here. so uh, sorry, I missed the context. Lower, what uh, document are you referring to? The primer uh, document I wrote right at the very beginning of this project, so that people would understood what M had a common view of what MPLS was. Ah, okay, okay. You remember yes. that one? And, and I'm it. absolutely happy if, if, if with, with with other people working on it. It's not a Stuart's private document. I'm more than happy for other people to work on it. And and, and I, I do think I it's a useful document, though. Uh, yeah, that, that's what I want to hear. And that means that we actually should spend some time on it, uh, um, re reviewing and deciding if we want to progress it. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that would be useful useful for in a rather cynical way is uh, certain ADs could do with being pointed at it when they complain about <laughs> MPLS. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I just want to add a comment. I do think that document is very useful. Um, it's good if we okay, can so later use it. Yeah. I will refresh it, um, and I am more than happy for other people to work with me on it. I'm even happy for someone else to take it over, um, but I'm, I will refresh it, and um, um, more than happy, as I say, to, to this to be a community action. Uh, or to die, depending on what the working group wants to do. Um, my private opinion is that it is a useful document. I would like to see it as an informational RFC. Good, uh, fine. I, and I, I will work with whoever is interested in working with me on it. Uh, but it was Kieran that commented also. It, it, it looks like you actually committed to review that document. Uh, start. I do think that should progress in the end to an informational RFC because it's very informational, okay. and uh, I'd happy to work with you on that. Okay, thank you. Okay, good. Thank. And then I have another kind of nitty comment. Uh, there is a lot of jumping between uppercase must and must nots and uh, lowercase must and must not must not. Are you, have you actually gone through and decide, decided on each of them, or is it uh, an open? Uh, in this particular document, I don't think we've done a complete review. Well, Matthew may I, may have done it, but I, I haven't done a complete review as to whether it should be uppercase or lowercase. But I am aware that there's a lot of subtlety in terms of what you say can say uppercase two and what you can't. So many things that you think should be uppercase um, are not allowed because actually you can't influence it. Okay. So you I, can't I, have I, an uppercase I, for a good example is you can't have an uppercase for an, the action of an operator, but you can have you, you can have an uppercase for the action of a protocol state change. Oh yeah, I, I, I can't aware that of that. But uh, what I'm saying is that uh, we need to discuss it every yes. time we run into a must. Even either if it's a uh, uppercase well, any, or lowercase. Any, requ yeah. any requirement. It's not just must, it's any requirements language statement yeah, yeah, needs to yeah. be formally or positive. Yeah, reviewed. but <clears throat> must are kind of heavier. Um, they're no different not from really, must but not. It's and, the same um... practice it is. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. I think what's heavy is Anything you put in uppercase, we have to be sure that we want them in uppercase. Indeed. There may be a few things that are in lowercase that might be better off being in uppercase, but if you put something in uppercase, you better mean it. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Agreed. Indeed. Indeed. Okay. I think we're. Uh, but right. we're a long way from committing text to the RFC editor, so we've got a bit of a while to fix it. Okay. I just, um, well, just don't want to defer this. No, 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 I understand. Uh, I understand. Uh, I understand. Discussion to the uh, author 48 or something yeah, yeah. like that. We, we need to solve it before. So before you go, please accept my apologies for next week. I'm on vacation with my wife next week. Ah, uh, OK. Oh, have fun. I'm on vacation as well, but I might dial in. I mean, this call happens early enough for, in my 
time zone that my yeah. family will probably be asleep. Right. In my case, uh, uh, we, we'll um, probably be doing whatever we're actually Thursday. We'll be on a train coming home. Oh, if you have internet, well, we might be. Well, we might be home. Actually, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm provisionally apologising. I'm not quite sure what time I get home next week. I think I'll be on a train. So, um, for you that didn't hear it, I will be relocating to the Philippines next week. Oh, will right. you be Look. there already, or is it during on Thursday that you're in transit? I'm, I'm leaving Stockholm on Wednesday evening, arriving in Manila uh, late. Thursday afternoon, and the time for the meeting here is midnight in Manila. So I might be able to get in if I get everything set up. That's a bit heroic, but, isn't it? 